So the new overdrive piston housings come with uh, ports already pre-drilled. So if you're working for on like a 46RH or something that uses an actual governor, then it can be installed as is. You just add the uh, O-ring that you see there to the to the journal. But if you're working with an RE series transmission, like a you know 48RE for example, uh, you need to plug those two holes to close off that circuit because it, it doesn't exist in a um, in a rear electronically controlled transmission. So that's what we're going to do first. And I have it set up on kind of like a makeshift type, um, you know, whatever you want to call this thing here, little bar, so that I could drive it in. And all you really need to do is just drive it in with a punch. And you got to seat them first. They could be a little tricky, but it'll eventually go in. So once I get it started, I like to finish it off with a punch. You just keep whacking them until they're fully installed and below or at or below flush. They just they can't be protruding. And those look to be slightly below flush and fully seated. All right, let's go ahead and install the O-ring on the uh, in the groove on the journal. This is a nice to have. It seals off that that bore from any leaks between the case and the extension housing. So I'll lube everything up. This is how it's going to go on the case and unlike what you just saw me do you want to make sure that nothing that shouldn't be covered is covered so you got all the holes exposed that need to be so now it's time to go put Let's it on the case I think the spec on this is 13 pounds 13 foot pounds you don't take a lot of torque more than sufficient so just <clears throat> like anything else with a bunch of bolts going around a circular perimeter just go crossways until they're all torqued just check them The low reverse band anchor. So it just goes right here and then seats into place. And so now the uh, overdrive piston housing is installed. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and start putting everything else back into the transmission. So I have the, the case set up on a stand. Uh, you can use whatever you want as long as it's stable, uh, whether it be something like this or whether it be placing the uh, the case inverted on a bench with a hole cut out in the middle um, or something similar. As long as it's sturdy, it's stable, it's not going to wobble or fall down on you. It, it, you know, ultimately it doesn't matter. There just needs to be plenty of room uh, for the intermediate shaft. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let me move in a little bit so that you can see what's going on. First thing you want to do is start with your new low roller assembly. So. 
just carefully place the sprag into the cam, work it around until you got all of it seated, and then just press it in place. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put your band in. You want band anchors going toward the band anchor pin. Otherwise, just lay it in position. Follow that with the drum. So here's a low reverse drum. And what you're going to do is once you have it kind of settled right on top of the sprag, you're going to rotate it clockwise and seat it into position. When the sprag is installed correctly, the drum will rotate clockwise freely and then lock counterclockwise. Basically the opposite of uh, the overdrive sprag. Next, go ahead and install your washer. This is 62 thousandths thick. That measurement doesn't mean anything. I just, for this transmission, I, out of habit, I'm measuring right down all the thicknesses of the washers. Next is the snap ring. Make sure it's on there, check it. It's good. Follow that up with the gear train. Make sure you have your little thrust washer there on the end of the output shaft, excuse me, the intermediate shaft. And then carefully lower it into position. Forward and direct drummer next. Same deal. Make sure you have the number three washer in place. Carefully lower it into position and then spline it in. That happened to go pretty easy. Sometimes it takes a you know a little jostling and you know, a, a little messing around with it for it to finally seat, but it'll go. Next is going to be the intermediate band. I like to soak the bands before I install them. I don't like to soak clutches, but I do like to soak the bands. So in the new design, you want to make sure, because the tabs are wider, as you can see, you want to make sure that the, the tab is offset toward the bottom or toward the rear of the case if you were putting this together horizontally. Because this open space here is uh, allows the band to move freely within, uh, you know, within the case bore, without it interfering with the uh, the sides of the case itself. So, if you install it backwards, you're never going to get the band anchor and, uh, and and you know band adjustment pieces into place so that you can. You know, you can finish the install. It'll be rubbing on the, 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 the tabs will be rubbing against the sidewall of the case where the, you know, roughly where the pump goes. Okay, so that's, that's what it'll look like once it's all seated in there correctly. As you can see, it moves freely. Next thing you're gonna do is install the pump. Start with the pump gasket. I spilled uh, transmission fluid all over this gasket so it's gonna look wet and damp. Before we do that, let's lubricate the pump bore.
get this area too inside direct drum bushing seals surface and then do the same thing with the pump itself just lubricate the pump overing area set your pump gasket into place And then just make doubly sure you have your number one washer in position. Pumps all lubed up. And then simply match the cutouts on the pump with those in the case. I like to use a screwdriver to align everything. Make sure that the pump bolt holes are all lined up where they need to be. And then just carefully lower it in. You don't have to snag your fingers, it happens, but. As long as you're careful, you won't hurt yourself. The pumps will slide in right into place on these transmissions. I mean, unless there's something wrong with the, the you know, the, the casting on either the pump or the case. Whereas some transmissions, you got to pound them in a little bit, like 4L60Es and such. <clears throat> These bolts are half inch and they get 15 foot pounds of torque. However, I'm going to be using an extension, so I'm actually going to set the torque wrench to give me 19 foot pounds because you always lose a little bit of, you know, of torquing strength when you run an extension. You can run these bolts down with an impact like this. This is a quarter, or excuse me, a three eighths inch in impact. It's for the most part, you know, an inch pound tool. You're not gonna break anything. Where I would use more caution is running down valve body bolts. Especially valve body bolts when you're working on Ford transmissions like uh, 4100 D4ODs, 4075s, you know, transmissions from like the mid 90s vintage, early 80s, mid 90s vintage on up. They can be real sensitive to over torquing, and you don't want to over torque something because then you'll have a valve or two bind up, and you know, the result is usually missing gears or you know, lack of upshifting, things like that. So just going on a crisscross pattern, making sure everything is torqued up. Oops. And I like to go around a couple of times because this gasket, or like all gaskets, will have to compress. So you wanna make sure that you hit the bolts twice. And that's true of pump gaskets, the extension housing to rear case gasket, pan gaskets, basically any kind of paper style gasket. All right, so now that the case is assembled, what I have to do is 
uh, put this thing back onto the bench so that I can install the servo assemblies and, and finish out the, uh, the main case. So stand by.